What's up guys, it's Mitch here from the DIYrecordingstudio.com and today we're looking at part three of the Sound Sculptor EQ573. It's a Neve style 1073 EQ. I hope you've enjoyed this video build series so far. If you've missed part one and two, I'll put a link right up here. And as always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe, but that's enough from me. Let's get into the build. Welcome back to the channel guys. And today we're gonna to be starting by attaching one of these daughter boards here for all the switches. And we're gonna connect it to the front panel. And you can see I've got a spacer there with a screw and it's a 15 millimeter female to female spacer. So you can see it just there. And you attach that to the front panel and then to the daughter board with the screws that are supplied. You then need to attach this front panel assembly to the metal side panel so we can then attach the main PCB. So you start by just screwing in these two black countersunk screws on the base plate to that side panel. And then we need to install the main PCB on that side panel, inserting the two by 40 pins header into those PCB holes. So you can see there with just some gentle pushing, if you've soldered this all nice and neatly, it should go in quite easy and then you can attach it with the two m three by six screws and two of the shake proof washers and then you need to also install these uh, male to female spaces for the back of the panel as well and then next up is probably one of the trickiest parts of this whole build is doing the header soldering so you need to solder the two by 40 pins uh, that join the motherboard to this daughter board. And you need to be very careful, obviously, not to get uh, any crosses on any of these pins. So take your time with it. Just add a little bit of solder to your iron to get started. And then just the way you go with soldering each of these pins and you need less solder than you think. And you just need to take your time and be careful with it and check your work. And most importantly, right in the center, of these header pins, there's gonna be a spacer later on, so you need to trim that um, right down to the board as flush as you can. Um, so that spacer will fit without contacting any of the connections here. And once that's done, you actually need to remove the front panel and unscrewing um, those black screws that we screwed in earlier, and then attach these three 25 millimeter spacers on the solder side. Um, with these screws and that will provide the spacing for the next order board that we'll be attaching. Then we move over to the potentiometer daughter board and on this PCB you want to set all three of your pots fully clockwise, insert the three six millimeter to four millimeter adapters all the way down on those plastic shafts there and then with the screws facing towards the PCB edge that carries the two connectors, tighten those screws. And then whilst keeping the pots in their fully clockwise position, you need to insert these three uh, metal little adapter ring kind of things um, and make sure they slot um, perpendicular to the screw um, so that the screws on the side and the little sort of opening in these adapter rings is facing up. Tighten them gently, just enough to hold them into position. Then next, you have to attach the potentiometer's PCB to the switch's PCB with three M three by six screws. Don't tighten them yet. Just attach the front panel again with the black countersunk screws like we had before. Then you need to add the nine millimeter buttons. These will be used for the frequency selector dials and you wanna set all the rotary switches fully anti-clockwise, place the three nine millimeter red uh, knobs on top of the three switches, lining up the white lines to where it says off on those labels, and then tighten them gently with the screws supplied and the hex key. Um, and you don't wanna tighten them too hard, otherwise you will warp the switch shaft, that plastic shaft there, it is plastic. So you just need to be careful not to over tighten it. And then next we need to insert the three three millimeter shafts into the top of these switches and tighten those screws on the adapters that we inserted to the potentiometer dials earlier. So they connect into those dials that we set up before. 
Then you want to set all your potentiometers to 12 o'clock by turning those adapters that we just put in. You'll feel like a center click once it's at 12 o'clock. And then you can take the three black knobs for the three top switches, lining those lines up vertically, and then tighten the screws for these knobs with the hex key supplied. And then attach the last knob, which is gonna be for the high pass filter, lining up the white line to the off label. So make sure that you line all these up. Sometimes you have to kind of readjust them if you don't get them quite right uh, the first time. So just make sure that you line them up properly so that they're gonna point where you need them to. Now you can finally tighten the three screws that attach the potentiometers board. And then once you've done that, you can insert the 10 pins header from the IO board into the corresponding socket. Uh, on the main PCB so it'll slot in nice and neatly and then attach that board to the 20 mil spaces with the two m3 by 6 screws that are supplied so now you'll see why we put those spaces there and then once the IO board is inserted and fastened to the main PCB you can connect the 16 conductors ribbon cable between the pots and the main PCB so it'll kind of just fold over those inductors and slot in to the header that you've already put in there. And that's basically it for the EQ573 from Sound Sculptor. If you have an MP573 that you're going to be using with the EQ573, there is a connector that you can solder together to link those two, thus creating the original 1073 EQ architecture that inserts itself in between the input and output stage of the actual preamp. So. That is my preferred way to use this EQ. Um, I'm gonna do another little video on some changes that I'm gonna make to this cable just to make it less noisy and a bit more sturdy. So that's coming in some future videos. So I hope you enjoyed the build for the EQ573 from Sound Sculptor. It's been a fun one. It is now one of the mainstay EQs that I use in my studio all the time. I love it, it sounds great, and I'll have more videos on how this EQ works and how it sounds coming very soon. So that's the end of part three of the build for the EQ573 from Sound Sculptor. I hope you've enjoyed this build series. If you've got any questions, as always, don't forget to hit me up in those comment sections down below. And if you wanna see builds of any other DIY 500 series kits or any other DIY studio equipment, make sure you leave me a comment. As always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. I'm Mitch from the DIYRecordingStudio.com and I'll catch you soon.